Well, Tony, this has been a bit of a, a weird week for you. Are you hoping a, a win gets you a fight with Fabrizio Verdun, or how, how does that work? Oh, man, I'm just worried about the fight that's at hand. Honestly, with the beef with Verdun, I'm over it. I mean, there's other shit to worry about besides that. I'm willing to squash it. I know he is, too. I'm a big fan of his, man. I mean, that's really, ultimately, when I first came into the UFC before the Ultimate Fighter, I saw him at the airport, and I went up to him. I was like, you're Fabricio, right? Like a fucking fanboy. It was fucking crazy. And I was like, I would love to come and train with you. The dude was so open and willing to fucking let me go to his camp, gave me his number, and did all of that. So for all the things that had happened that day, it's kind of crazy. He caught me on a bad day, which was a bad one because I did two trips to Big Bear down to OC to take care of my camp. Nobody offered to help me with all my equipment except for my teammates. I didn't have a truck. I had my work truck, which is a car. So I had 14 mats stacked high one time. I had all the bags in there. I had my dogs. I mean, I had everything you could think of it you saw inside my camp. I had it packed in my car. I drive down the hill. I get there about like 3 o'clock. My wife's like, are you, are you okay? I can't believe you did this. I unloaded the car by myself. And boom, went right back up the hill. Went right back up the hill, grabbed the rest of my shit. It took me about 10 some odd hours to get done with all the stuff. So of course, I'm a mountain man. I just got back. I'm not gonna deal with anybody's bullshit. I'm not bougie, I don't give two fucks. I'm down to square up with anybody. Everybody's the same size on the ground as they are. I told everybody, I'm not afraid. I'm a fucking ultimate fighter and a champion. Nice, well obviously you got this title fight online. I wanna ask you, what's the last year or so been like for you? Because, I mean, you ha you're coming off the amazing win over RDA. You got all this opportunity in front of you, and then because of Habib, because of everything to play, I mean, you're forced to wait and wait and wait. What's it been like for you this whole time? Humbling. It's been awesome. I couldn't have asked anything better. I spent so much more time with my kid. Um, got to know my family a lot better. I mean, they got to see me better to grow as a person and an athlete. I mean, really touching my faith, family, and my friends, but everybody stayed true. I mean, I held true to myself. I said, I'm going to get to 200 some odd pounds. I'm going to tell Khabib and show him that it is possible. And I did it twice. I did it two times within the time slot. And I thought it was funny. Um, people just need to get their shit together, man. You need to make weight. We're a professional. You're making the sport look bad. But like I said, I don't really care. He's a brother in arms, and this is one love. We're here for one reason. There's much more important things to worry about besides that. We all bleed this color. As a fighter, how did you stay sharp? I mean, you're at the very highest level of the sport right now in your division. So how do you make sure that during that time off, you're still staying sharp as a fighter as well? Always staying sharp. I mean, the things that happen, you just try to stay focused in and hone in. Uh, think small. You know, you always think big all the time, but we're, think, we're, we're throwing strikes. We're throwing change-ups. We're not throwing curveballs. We're not going outside our boundaries. The things that happen during the week, it's hard, man. It's hard. My family was, like, seriously, like, right there. Um, other families were there. There's no bullshit around it. I mean, I've, the stories that we were hearing, the, the people, that, the lives that were lost, and then you just see the numbers. I mean, when we finally got back to the hotel after the blockades, you see the numbers just start to skyrocket. I'm surprised that they're having the fight. I really am. You know, I'm not saying the show must go on. No, fuck that. I'm trying to be professional. If the company's going to do it, I signed up for the program. I'm going to have to do the best that I can to focus in, hone it in there, and start throwing strikes. Has it been tough for you? I mean, obviously, I, I have a son as well. I live here as, you know, as a family man. I know it's been kind of tough for us to even focus to get ready, you know, to come out and do interviews and stuff. And we're not getting in a cage on Saturday night, man. Has it been tough for you to, to I guess, put that, those tragedies aside and get ready to take care of business? You're not going to ever put them aside. You're not. You said it yourself. You're, you're local here. I'm not a local. Kevin's a local. I'm sure that it's probably going through his head, too. It's not just me, it's everybody that's affected with this, man. It's not, it's not, I mean, the media, they were portraying, oh, it's the biggest thing, and the celebrities, oh, it's the biggest thing. It's not the biggest fucking thing, man. That's some bullshit. Be fucking real, dude. This is some, this is, this is fucked. You know, I don't care if you're mentally or a fucking terrorist. It doesn't matter what color you are. That's some fucking terror right there. That's some bullshit. You know, the fact that it happened, I mean, it just fucking sucks. But to see the people band together, to come together, straight up, I mean, literally, I get chills. I mean, seriously, I get chills again of seeing it, I mean, that night, we were driving down the road, and I'm, I was open up the window, and I would see people just kind of like scared me, hey, bro, I hope you're good, man, just stay safe. And like these guys would be like, hey, thanks, dude, and they said, love you. I'm like, fuck, bro, that's fucking awesome, because that guy was gonna go tell three people. And for me, somebody told me that. And so for us to be as fighters and to represent the sport, and to be able to try to inspire and to motivate this town, to try to come, not try to come back, because they are coming together, but to add to that, that's beautiful. So I'm just trying to do my best as a professional and a representative for the UFC. That's awesome. Well, you do have Kevin Lee on Saturday night. Uh, hasn't accomplished what you've happened. You, know, you have accomplished in the sport, no doubt about it. But he is talented. I mean, when you break him down, you put the, the talking aside and the bravado aside and all that. I mean, what do you what do you see in him as a fighter? 
I see him as a young and up and coming fighter. I see him when uh, I was a captain of a two-time national championship team where he came from as a hungry wrestler that didn't want to make it, as somebody that just would make so many mistakes that it just used excuses to move forward, to get out of it. I really tried my best, but I made more money bartending than I did I was going to go for the, for the job that I was going to get. So I was like, you know, what am I doing? I'm just going to school for what, for wrestling? So I need to find something else that's going to test me. I need to do something with my life. I'm a very educated man. You know, it's funny, Ariel Hawani said something about uh, why do you capitalize the first letter of everything? I do it just to piss people off. If you want me to write an APA format or MLA, I'll do it. You know, I'll give you a nice hypothesis with a thesis. I mean, straight up, and I'll support all my evidence. But the part is, is we're here to represent. I'm not fake, and I see this guy as a fake, trying to be something that he's not. I know where you come from. You lived in the suburbs, too. Trust me, I know. We got people around the block that just, you know what I mean? So. I don't have to be fake. I'm probably one of the most real. If people wanted an interview from me from Big Bear, they had to climb up 8,800 feet. So that's why I went up there, because I knew nobody was going to go up there. This is a big fight for you. I mean, an interim title would mean a lot, but Conor McGregor's out there. The undisputed title is out there. You guys share a management team. I got to think you may have a little bit of insight. I mean, do you let yourself think about what's next, that you know, red panty night, so to speak? Is it there for you? I mean, do you think about what comes after this? Panties. I like blue panties. So, I mean, for me, you can fucking say that if you want, but, I mean, depending on whatever, I'm sure he wears panties now. You know what I mean? I mean, if you get to that certain spot in your life, he's going to be worried about me because if he wants to retire, if, he's not going to defend a vacay. He's not going to try to fight me. There's no insider information. He's never spoken my name. I'm one of the most ruthless vatos out there, man. And uh, this guy, he doesn't want a part of me. I'm not aiming at him. I, I don't care two fucks. I don't want to fight somebody that doesn't want to fight me or compete with some of the best. Because when you're saying I'll fight anybody anytime, you're fucking full of shit. For me, I've been fighting anybody, anytime, any weight, straight up. The last time we saw you fight, incredible performance. I mean, I think you, you, you turned a lot of heads that night. How are we going to see things go down on Saturday night? Uh, the things with Khabib would have got us ass kicked, you know, with all due respect. He just, I just saw right through him, and I think I beat him. The art of fighting without fighting, it's amazing. Mental warfare, it's great. Um, you know, but this guy's a game opponent. You know, whoever's going to sign on dotted line, who is Kevin Lee? Kevin Lee was the only one that had enough balls, enough gumption. I told him when I interviewed with Fox, I told him, I was like, look, you got to market yourself. You got to get some more fights and you got to bleed a little bit more. Well, he's going to fight. He's going to bleed. And he definitely marketed himself to get this interim lightweight title. Nobody else was there.